thank you for joining us for a special edition of News 19 at 7. For the past three months, News 19 has brought you stories of resilience. We toured the properties of area farmers and restaurant owners who shared with us how they fought their way through the pandemic, each person with their own unique journey. Today, we've compiled these testimonies and we're sitting down with South Carolina Commissioner of Agriculture, Hugh Weathers, to learn how his department is helping farmers for the future. This is Surviving COVID, Farm to Table. In South Carolina, May is the month for harvesting collards, broccoli, strawberries, carrots, and cilantro. Dozens of specialty crops will once again make their way from the farm to your table this year, thanks to the resiliency of the nearly 25,000 farmers across the state. They had to do a lot of pivoting. I think that was the word of the year last year, wasn't it? Pivoting to find those other outlets because the severity and the suddenness was absolutely what overwhelmed us. Hugh Weathers is the South Carolina Commissioner of Agriculture. He says the impact on farm-to-table operations during the pandemic really depended on where the food was going. If it's a restaurant table, obviously the impacts were terrible. If it was from a farmer to a home table, where we were all quarantined, then the impacts were positive as long as the farmer could make those adjustments when necessary. To keep operations running, some farmers created new business plans selling directly to customers. We put a sign up at the end of our dirt road advertising the okra, and then after a while we started having a stream of folks that would come in. Others rolled up their sleeves and mobilized efforts to feed those in need. We fed over 10,000 families. Last year, the Department of Agriculture worked with partners to develop a privately funded Farmers to Food Bank program, which Weathers hopes to continue for the foreseeable future. That gave farmers an opportunity to sell. We did nearly half a million dollars to South Carolina farmers by way of our distributors, benefiting all the food pantries around the state that participated with us. When restaurants began to open in 2020, the department teamed up with multiple agencies to create a commercial saying restaurants are open and highlighting local eateries using products from local farms. Going forward, Weathers plans to get more help for the agriculture industry. As this American Recovery Act dollars come to South Carolina, we think it'd be very wise to invest some of those in agriculture. The department is also financially rewarding farmers willing to take risks and pursue innovative ideas. We think there are ways to support those farmers willing to take a risk to help make sure South Carolina's food supply is more immune to whatever happens next. So the next time you're perusing the grocery aisle or deciding which restaurant to visit, Commissioner Weathers encourages doing a little homework to see where you can buy certified SC grown products. It's a thank you to those who ensured a steady food supply during a global pandemic, straight from the farm to your table. At this small organic farm in Red Bank, collard greens, radicchio, kale, and potatoes are just a fraction of the crops sprouting from the earth. Put one in. But this year, what's growing in great abundance at Organically Roland doesn't come from the ground. Mounds and mounds full of beautiful jewels. It's hope, and it comes from the heart. Absolutely. Things are looking up. Jason Roland, owner and operator, made most of his business by selling to restaurants. I have been doing this, growing organic produce and selling it directly to restaurants since I was 17 years old, so this is all I've ever done. Last year, as restaurants began to shut down and profits began to dwindle, my income went from 95% coming from restaurants to almost zero overnight. He and his wife created a business plan in two days. We started doing a home delivery CSA and a pickup CSA. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, where consumers can buy a share of produce every week. But this is my greenhouse. A year later, Roland is staying busy. He's now in a position where he can operate successfully using the CSA model alone. These guys are ready to go. And for the first time in a long time, he's back in the greenhouse, working to bring the most special part of his farm to your table. Feel that hope coming back.
These trays, they're all filled with watermelon. In this greenhouse on the Harris family farm. They'll be ready for 4th of July. Owners Larry and Janie Harris are preparing for a busy summer. We could sell two truckloads in a day. Larry is the president of Carolina Vegetable Co-op comprised of 15 members from eight area farms. Last year, as he tried to sell the co-op's produce, he says the buyers weren't coming. Some of the larger farmers that were able to move their produce to some of the restaurants and the grocery stores, when the grocery stores stopped selling as much as they were selling, they wasn't buying as much as we had been accustomed to selling to them. Look at that. Sales for farmers in his co-op dropped by 75% or more. Some of them were selling to some of the restaurants, but they did not have that marketing savvy or skills that was necessary because the average age of the farmers are like 65 to 70 years old. Harris Family Farm typically sold to five grocery stores. There we go. But as the pandemic brought sales to a halt, Harris shifted from selling to donating the farm's produce. I was trying to just help a person to survive. Drip irrigation. On a sunny afternoon, we watched the Harris family work to grow a fresh crop. These are broccoli. Their sights set on a more prosperous year. We have to make sure that we're working together and doing what we can do to support one another. And then this way we'll support the community. For this farm, they're sowing seeds of faith. Tomatoes, okra, squash. To feed you. Cucumbers, honeydew. And your family. Cabbage, collards. At the table. When I would go to my grandmama's house, we would play in the fields. And, you know, instead of going in the house to eat, we would just eat what was in the field and we keep on playing. Bonita Clemens grew up eating fresh produce from the family farm. I am a farmer advocate. In 2001, she took knowledge from her childhood and her health studies and created the nonprofit Diane's Call, named after her mother who passed away at 42. I knew that nutrition is the first line of defense. To continue her mission, Clemens founded Pharmacists in 2016. We are an army of women. We don't kill, we heal. Pharmacists is a group of 11 black female farmers from the Midlands who work together to grow potatoes, onions, garlic, collards. You name it, we get it. Anything they can grow on this half acre of land feeds their families. We help and we train about how food is the medicine. We do sometimes sell to the public at a nominal cost, and sometimes we've given food to the Food Hub, which is on North Main. Last year, as businesses shut down and people lost their jobs, pharmacists and Diane's call rolled up their sleeves. We went straight into putting our masks on, putting our gloves on, and getting food out to the people. Her food hub, Axiom Farms, teamed up with Harvest Hope Food Bank, the state's Department of Agriculture, and South Carolina farmers to feed families most impacted by COVID-19. May to September, we fed over 10,000 families. In 2021, Clemens will continue giving health education classes and mentoring young farmers. By the end of the year, she expects to start a mobile grocery store. We've been working the same soil for so many generations, it just becomes part of who you are. On this 10 and a half acres in Sumter County. The watermelon's what put us on the map for sure. Okra and collard greens are the staple crops for Nat Bradford, owner and operator of the Bradford Family Farm. I'm the seventh generation to be saving seeds and passing them along. Before the pandemic, the family business was based solely on direct sales to restaurants. Then came March 2020. We went from 100% of our business down to about 20% overnight. When restaurants shut down, Bradford quickly shifted gears to find other marketplaces. We started going to grocery stores, smaller sales, but more restaurants scattered out over a broader cross section of the southeast. He also opened the farm to drive through traffic, welcoming anyone who wanted to make purchases on site. It took most of the summer, he said, for sales to pick up again. COVID really showed us where we were weak on the farm you know, with business. It was really great having restaurants to deliver to, but we didn't have a connection with the, with the locals around here. We put a sign up at the end of our dirt road advertising the okra, and then after a while, we started having a stream of folks that would come in. Our strategy really shifted to where are the mouths? 
and how do we get to them? And so we're going to take that into 2021 and build on it. We watched from the ground and from the sky as the last of the collards were harvested. A farmer with hope for a brighter future, making room for next season's produce from his farm to your table. Every time that you put a seed in the ground for a new crop, it's kind of a chance to start a new slate. So we're, we're kind of leaving COVID in the dust, we're hoping. My husband and I were actually in Europe celebrating the company becoming profitable last February. And we ended up spending that week in Europe outrunning the coronavirus. Sarah Simmons is the CEO of City Grit Hospitality Group, which operates City Grit Catering, Small Sugar, Il Focolare Pizzeria, and the nonprofit Feed the City. For Simmons, one of the biggest struggles during the pandemic is preparing for the unknown. It's like changing the wheels on a tractor trailer while you're going down the highway with a blindfold on. Small Sugar in Columbia's Vista is a farm-to-table cafe. Their menu creations are based on what local farmers produce. But at the height of the pandemic, many farmers decided not to plant. We would come up with a plan and then, you know, a set of menus. And then all of a sudden those ingredients weren't available. The, the disruption in the supply chain was tremendous. Despite the hardships, Simmons still made time to give back by delivering 10,000 meals to vulnerable community members with the Feed the City campaign last summer. To this day, she says all employees have remained on the payroll. Our company, when we rebuilt it, we rebuilt it with a purpose of giving people opportunity and breaking them from the poverty cycle. So that really meant from us that we could not unless it was a literal last resort, lay our team off. Her businesses are still operating under takeout only, with outside seating. Simmons says she's also started a new delivery company. Although she lost about 50% of revenue over the past year, she says PPP loans and community support helped her restaurants survive. We saw the train coming. January 2020, as coronavirus cases began popping up in the United States, Brittany Miller, owner and operator of Manchester Farms Quail, started planning ahead. Our business before COVID was about 80% uh, restaurants, 20% retailers. She ordered packaging ahead of time, knowing it was about to be in short supply. She also started pulling their flock in early to produce more retail products. You wake up and go, did I, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right choice? In March, when the farm shut down, she was forced to furlough employees. We went from 100 people basically down to 22 overnight. By July, she started processing birds again. We fortunately just had to shift our product mix. This time, instead of making more products for restaurants, she instead made the majority for grocery stores. We came back online in July. We've been sold out of everything we've produced since then. We've always had a diverse group of marketplaces for this very reason, because quail is a nicety, not a necessity. So when economies are bad, people will slough off quail and, and get by in the grocery store just like they did in the pandemic. Now, Manchester Farms is in need of more employees. We could stand to probably high about 30 to 40 people right now. A struggle so many business owners are facing as more consumers are venturing out to eat. Restaurants are all scrapping and we're all fighting for the same people that want to have a job. We used to do open interviews on, on Tuesdays from 2 to 4. And at this point, we're just walking the door. Just come on in and we'll, we'll give you a job. We've all done this for all of our lives. We have too much love and passion for it, and we're not going to let one pandemic take us down. Off Franklin Street in historic Cotton Town sits the Warmouth. A little bit five years old, we specialize in Midlands cuisine, specialty beverages, and hospitality. The restaurant occupies an old auto shop, helping revive an old commercial district to bring visitors back to North Main. About a year ago, when COVID-19 forced restaurants to close, owners Rhett Elliott and Porter Barron reworked their business concept, shifting from full-time dine-in to full-time takeout. A lot of the joy turned to worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the restaurant business became a very different animal. I drive delivery myself for us. Every day it was something different. Just treading water, trying to survive. A big challenge was maintaining their menu due to changes at area farms. Farm co-ops from Charleston that quit delivering to Columbia altogether. We had to drive to Charleston and get some 
gets vegetables a couple of times. It's been so difficult to plan for anything more than a week out because, you know, you're just going to get the rug pulled out from under you, whether it's regulatory or unable to find some ingredients all of a sudden that was key to what we were doing. Then, in November of last year, as the restaurant approached its fifth anniversary, owners wrote an Instagram post saying they faced imminent closure. It was a really uh, scary time. Customers rallied to support the restaurant, and federal assistance kept the war mouth afloat. PPP has been crucial for us to keep lights on. The restaurant is easing back into regular service, but at a lower capacity while maintaining health safety protocols. Menu items featuring ingredients from local farms are selling out. A win-win at both ends of the farm-to-table strategy. And we hope that we can just hold on a few more months and beat this thing for good.